give me strength. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's so much power. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Then we're going to end it up with, I say yes to my Lord. I want everybody know. Get ready, SKU Convocation. We want to put it together. SKU Convocation. At the end of the year, find on the fall. Get ready. Somebody say, there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Y'all can help me say, power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Somebody say healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. One more healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus, there's a deliverance.
There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, power, 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 walk right. Power, power, power to talk right. Power, power, power to live right. Power, power, power to hear right. Power, 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 power. Come on, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. There is power, power, power. Come on, altos. Come on, tennis. Woo! 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 Y'all gonna make me sing. Somebody say, power. Power, 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 Holy Ghost, 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 power, power, power.
choir. Go ahead, choir! 
Come on, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Everybody, put your hands together. We're grateful unto the Lord to be able to come to you today in celebration of our Pentecost service. We thank God for our speakers on today, our own, from all the way from Beacon Holy Nazarene Church. Put your hands together for my brother, Pastor Jeffrey Ward. Amen, amen, amen. We are blessed on today, for this is a day that the Lord has made. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, you are blessed on today. I said, you are blessed on today. You better ask somebody. You better, I, 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 I remember reading a passage of scripture. I think Tilden preached this one time at our church where he talked about Hezekiah and how the, how, how the, 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 the king had brought his, his witch doctors up there and they danced around and cut themselves and, 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 and prayed for hours and hours and days and nights. And then, and then he said, maybe your God is asleep. Maybe somebody needs to wake him up. But then they, they, they said, well, it's your turn. He said, well, he, he went before God and did a quick prayer. Because sometimes it don't take no whole long drawn out prayer to make God do something. He said, Lord, for that sake, I need you to come and show yourself. Stand back, y'all. <laughs> Boom! God lit the place up, ate up the, the water, ate up the stones, ate up the altar, ate up that. You better ask somebody. You better ask somebody who the God is that we serve on the day. God don't back down. God is yet strong in 2021. God still stands strong because the truth, the truth has not changed. And Pentecost, Pentecost is one of the three feast days that we believe in. So I, I thank everybody for, for, for being here on today. Everybody may take their seat. I'm not gonna be before you long. Uh, I think that uh, the service has been, and time has been well spent, so I'm not gonna take up a lot of time. I, I did have a, a few things I would like to say. And, and before that, I do wanna acknowledge uh, my wife and my, my church and my daughters and my nephew. I, I don't know if any of you all follow them on Facebook, but my, my nephew, Ramon, is, was just did a commencement service for Northern Illinois University. So proud of him. He uh, you know, finished law school. He's been published by Harvard. Just, you know, a tremendous uh, uh, anointed young man. Uh, you know, same thing with my daughter, Tiffany. She was, you know, recently acknowledged with the state of Illinois as a staff attorney. And, then uh, Sharice, you know, uh, she graduates, y'all. She graduates in a couple of days. She's finished. She's finished. She's board certified psychiatrist now, but she's about to be child and adolescent board certified. And just so, you know, I, I'm just humbled. And then, you know, with uh, Deacon Cedric, Cedric is just, you know, a, a blessed young man. He, he He's an executive with, um, with Ford, you know, with, with a master's in uh, engineering. And then, you know, I also got, you know, my brother, my, 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 my little son bringing up the red. Like, he, you know, he, he, he's the young one. You know, it's something about watching, you know, because I was the baby. So I was always watching, you know, and my, my daddy used to take me to work with him. And he said, boy, hold that light. I, I, I was the light holder. I couldn't do a whole lot else. Hold the light, boy, hold the light. <laughs> it's something about being the watcher, the, 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 the one who gets to, to hold the light, the one who gets to see you know what's going on. So I'm just thankful for, for all of them and how God has blessed them. I, I didn't call them up because I, you know, I didn't want to drop that on them. Sharice just came back from Atlanta and Moni's just been busy. Said, you know, so I, I didn't want to drop that on them. But I thank you all for coming out. And then I, and I, as I told, as I told Pastor Butler, he, you know, some, sometimes some folks, they just get you, get you start talking like slaves, right? You's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> You're just gonna get me. And me and my wife had already talked. She says, Jeff, don't you start? Don't you try to pull me up there? Well, baby, you gotta come on up. Cause you know, I'm already in trouble. <laughs> so sometimes when you're already in trouble, it don't make no difference no more. <laughs> so let us receive 
Minister Ward. <laughs> I just thank God for being here on today. I praise him because he's been such a wonderful God to me. And I can tell since 10 o'clock this morning, he's been showing up good to you all too. And I'm praising him on the day because you know what? In 1987, maybe, maybe 1988, I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And there was somebody, this is interesting because it is a good day. Because I had two people, one on each side, on that Wednesday evening that I was on my way to the Bahamas. But I had to go to prayer first. And when I went to prayer, I had Elder Susie Ward, my best friend that I've ever had in this world, and my mother-in-law. And then I had Minister Banks on the other side of me. Now, don't you know I didn't have a choice but to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost? And I thank God that was so many years ago. But when I saw Mother, uh, Mother uh, Haskins come in on the day, I call her something different. When I saw her come in, I just started thinking about way back then when I first came to Beacon. And when I first came, I remember I had, we had just gotten married and we just started having children. And, and the Lord connected me with uh, Mother Haskins. She wasn't Mother Haskins then, Diane. <laughs> connected me with Diane and my sister-in-law. And she, they connected me with them to teach me how to be a wife. I mean, a real wife. They told me how the world operated. And then they told me how the God operated. Although my mother had always been a wonderful mother. But don't you know, sometimes, sometimes you say, I got to see this thing for myself. But the Lord didn't let me get too far away. And then I got with my Cassandra, yes. and I got with Diane, yes. and they would teach me about how to be a woman in the Nazarene church. And I thank God on the day because all that time so long ago in 1982, I'm not preaching, I'm introducing. But as I introduce, I got to tell you the story. You've already heard it so many times ago because it was 40 plus years ago that this occurred, that one day I was standing in front of this man right here. No, 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 I was behind him. And I'm still behind him because he's my husband. And I didn't know when I stood behind him in that lunchroom line that he would be the pastor of Beacon Holy Nazarene Church. And it wasn't on his mind that he would be my husband. As I stood in back of him back in 1982, down at Southern Illinois University. And I know some of you have already heard it, but sometimes you need to rehearse it over and over and over again. And it's not for us, it's for the devil. And because you know what? If you don't rehearse it over and over and over again, you might think that he has authority. But we know that the enemy has power but he don't have no authority. He don't have authority to get behind, get in front of me, right behind my husband. Look, it's making him uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm gonna be behind him. Wherever he walks, I walk. When he ran yesterday on the trail, he said, come on, baby, we gonna run the trail. I was riding right with him. And I was running, well, no, no, we were bicycling that day, right, baby? We were bicycling, and I was bicycling right with him. The other day, we was running, and I was running right here. I heard somebody talk about they saw a house, and them and their husbands saw the same house and like the same house. As me and my husband were bicycling, you know, we just looking around, and we think we're getting old. It's time to start thinking about another place to live. And I saw this house, and I said, oh, that house sure is nice. That's exactly what I would want to be when I have all my grandchildren, y'all, and my grandnephews and my grandnieces. And as we were riding back, I said, what house did you see? He said, I saw this house, and he described it. 
don't you know when I roll, we roll back past it? He said, there's the house right there. Don't you know it was the same house that I saw that said it? So don't you know the devil can't do nothing to you? What well, God puts together, let no man separate. And don't we know, I'm praying, sorry, Lord. Amen. 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 God on the day because I'm introducing you to some for the first time and to a lot of you for many, many times. This is Pastor Jeffrey Ward, but more importantly, this is my husband. This is the only husband I've ever had. This is the only husband I will ever have. There is nothing that can separate us. Why? Because we got married under God. Our life has been about our children and our relationship with one another. Are we perfect? Absolutely not, because the word of God tells us there is no man perfect but God. But I do know one thing, he loves the Lord. And I do know one thing, that he loves me. And I know another thing, that he loves his family. And more importantly, because if you got a man who loves God, you don't have to worry about all that rest of that stuff. And I want everybody to do one last thing for them. I want you to look at each other's foreheads real quick. Look at the person next to you to their forehead when you look at their forehead do you see God is the word God written on their forehead and if the word God is not written on their forehead who are you to judge we have to come to the realization that God is in everything and one thing that's important don't let anybody think um, you, you're not a victim and don't let anybody think that they can talk about you, do this to you, and it start to affect you, your personality, and your relationship with God. Because ain't none of y'all get God written on your forehead. And if you ain't got God written on your forehead, who are you to judge me? Who are you to judge my husband? Who are you to judge my relationship? Who are you to judge my children? Who are you to judge this church and this pastor? You can't judge, why? Cause you ain't got God written on your forehead. So I introduce you to the head, the man of my life. Always the won't be the man of my life. My husband, Pastor Jeffrey Ward. See, I told y'all he was gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> amen, amen. You know what, I just, I'm, I'm humble today, I'm humble to to, to, that God has blessed me to be alive in 2021. You know, a lot of us sometimes take life for granted, but believe me when I tell you, you were called, God said he knew your name before you were even born. You were created for this moment in time because God knew that we collectively provide a sense of unity yes. to get something done. Amen. I say this because as I, as I reflect on that, I also look and, 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 and I, I tell you, Sherman, you really, you, you got me this time when, when, when Cynthia brought in uh, the, the bishop and, and, you know, I tell you, when Sean brought in Mother Diane, I mean, it's, you know, it's just cer certain things that just move you. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful for the, that moment. I, I, I can, I think about certain passages in scripture and I, I can remember that Cynthia was so nice to invite me and uh, uh, my wife out to her home. Uh, to see Bishop, and it was one of those things where, as we were leaving, because the space was so beautiful, you know, it was it's such a magnificent uh, uh, atrium, a, uh, the mansion, you know, the, 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 mansion. the walking in was, was just so beautiful, and I, and as I was leaving, me and her said, man, you know what, as Joel, God said your ladder would be greater. Woo! Because sometimes, you, you know, you getting blessed for somebody else. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you don't know why God has created a space for you. You getting blessed for somebody else. Somebody else. <laughs> and as, I, as, as we walked in and, and uh, Bishop was standing there in the foyer and she was looking, I was like, oh, my God. And, and my wife and I have been fortunate. We, we traveled to some spaces and we've been to some nice places. But, man, it was just such a magnificent space Amen. that God has blessed that family with. And not only their family, but how they ushered in, how, how Cynthia, I applaud you for, for how you have taken care of Bishop, how you have, have taken care of your, 
your mother. Because, you know, that is one of the things that that that, I, that 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 really kind of floored my wife when I when I when I she when I was younger and th those of y'all who know me when I was younger, you know I wasn't always very spiritual, but you know I, I had some word down in me, <laughs> and, and and one time she was we we were got into to a thing and she said something about me and I said that's not true because God has said. Blessed is the man who honors his mother and father that you, your days will be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yes. The man who honored his mother and father. She said, well, hold on. You was just trying to do this and such. Now you're quoting scripture? <laughs> but blessed, Pastor Cynthia. Blessed, Pastor that you have done this for your mother. What a yes. blessing it is. What a blessing. You know, what a, what a blessing it is. Now, I applaud you for that. I applaud you for, you know, as, as, cause all of us know as, uh, we reflect on scripture and, I, and Job is one of my favorite, um, uh, Bible, uh, characters. However, one of the things I thought that was very moving that Job said and did was when everything had been taken from him. When everything had been stripped from Job, Job said something that, I, I, that, that resonates. Yes. He said, naked did I come into this world. world. He said, naked do I leave. That's it. But he said, blessed, blessed. is the name of the Lord. So, so you're going to get some stuff in this life. And sometimes that stuff will be taken away from you. But in the process, there's a certain truth that yet stands strong. Yeah. God yet stands on the throne, y'all. And he said his ladder was great. He got back a hundredfold of whatever he lost. So I applaud you. I applaud mother. And I, I, again, I, I don't mean to be before you long, but I, I, I did want to say that because I, I think it's important to acknowledge those things yes, that, 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 that you see that are the, the physical manifestation of a blessing. Mm -hmm. I said the, the physical manifestation of a blessing. Sometimes people, they, they, they don't realize that they're looking at a burning bush. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that the burning bush is right in front of them. But because they, 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 they take stuff for granted, they don't realize God is doing a physical manifestation of a blessing. My God. And, I, and I, I applaud that for, um, for, for our own uh, bishop. And, you know, she always would be Minister Banks to me because I, she knew me. And sent there when we were like knee high to a duck, <laughs> and you know. So, so I, I, I thank God for her. And, and again, let, let me go through this quickly because I, I don't want to be before you long. And I, I know we have spent a lot of time already, but I, I, I did want a couple of things I wanted to say yes. that that I think are relevant to what's going on now in the, in the day and the time that we live in. And yes. I, at first, I go to the familiar passage of scripture that that we all know, and this is about the day of Pentecost, and this is. Acts 2 and 1, and it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh -huh. there were with one accord in one place. Now, I want to put a stick pin in, 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 in one accord in one place. And then came the sound of a uh, uh, of heaven, of a rushing mighty wind. So uh, all about, we understand that. But I, I, my stick pin is in uh, they were all on one accord. I said they were all on one accord. See, because one of the things that we have right now, and, and, and I think it's very important that we need to understand as a group, there's the power of unity. The, 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 the power of us coming together as a group. And, th and this is important because our country is going through a division. Mm. Our culture is going through a division. Yes. There is a division in our neighborhoods. There's division among each and every one of us in so many other sectors of our lives that the, the, the value of understanding unity is important. Yeah. Now, first I go to John 17, John 17 and 11. And mm -hmm. this is Jesus talking. He says, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. So Jesus is praying for the disciples that, you know what, that they would be in unity as you and I are in unity. This is the thing that we find 
is a, a reflection that Jesus had because he understood. And then this, he goes on, I'm jumping up now to the 14th verse, and he says, For I have glorified thee on the earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Yeah. I have completed the work you sent me to do. Unity has to do with oneness of purpose. Yeah. Unity is not sameness. It is distinctiveness going in the same direction in order to achieve a common purpose. Yeah. So this thing about being an individual is very important because God created us to be individuals. He didn't create us to mirror and model each other, but to create us as our individual uh, selves, we are created to um, accomplish a common purpose. Mm -hmm. So unity is, the, is a purpose-driven, not a person-driven. I say unity is purpose-driven yes. and not person-driven. Right. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are distinct persons going after the same purpose. Mm. And this is the piece that as, as, as we reflect on this, you, you have to get the piece of when uh, differences are by design. Men are not women, and women are not men. They are different by design. Uh -huh. And it's essential. God created differences in gender, race, or culture by design. The issue of unity is not in the changing of a person, but the clarifying of the purpose. Not the changing of the purpose, person but the clarifying of the purpose. Uh -huh. This is important that we get this because the goal is to have an achievement of purpose while having distinctive personalities. Unity say that, that, that we are, we have to uh, un understand that this, 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 this culture that we live in has uh, tried to, to, to water down this individual uh, and, and try to get everybody to somewhat of a cookie cutter uh, um, uh, um, frame of mind. One of the things you find, and in, in, in particularly when um, unity is in place, you, you look at, for instance, I, I used the example of an orchestra. The, 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 the conductor is, has got all these different sections of instruments, and if they play separately, it sounds like noise. But by him getting them collectively under the focus of one person, uh -huh. he can make that instruments all come to a common song. That's what is missing is common person, purpose. Uh, and, and our unity is tied to having completed the work uh, that you were sent to do. To achieve mm -hmm. unity, there has to be submission to a legitimate authority. Amen. Submission to a legitimate authority. And as long as there is clarity of the goal, then the unity is able to be the focal point of the direction of our purpose. Unity cannot exist if there is not clarity. That's right. So one of the things is it is unclear where you're going. If, if, if you're unclear where you're going, you'll be sure to get there. I say, if you don't know where you're going... <laughs> You'll find it every time. So we are here as we reflect on these truths to focus on what is true. I now go to verse 17. Verse 17, it says that, Then uh, said some of the disciples among themselves. Um, hold on one second. Let me uh, make sure I get to the right one. And verse... Um, 17, it says, uh, sanctify. Sanctity, sanctify them through thy truth. Yes. Thy word is truth. And thou hast sent me in the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And as for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they may also be sanctified through the truth. <laughs> now, Put a stick point in the truth. For this unity of purpose to work, the key element must exist. Sanctified in truth. If there is no truth, there is no legitimate unity. God only responds to the truth. Do you know what the truth is? Well, we live in a world where everybody got their own truth. Truth 
is an absolute. <coughs> an absolute standard by which everything is measured. So the, the, there, there's truth about the direction of north. There's no question about it. You know that north is north. You know that south is south. And it's, everything is measured by <coughs> that truth. So now, when you understand that that is the standard by everything is measured by, it's, truth leaves, lives outside of you. Whether you like it or not, accept it or not, buy it or not, if it's true, then it will operate outside of you. We operate in a world where people believe in its own truth. Unless yeah, you have right. an object standard, you could be believing in a lie, that's thinking right. that it is the truth. That's right. Think about this for a minute because object standard is a reality that is measured. Sen Jesus said, I set myself aside to fulfill a purpose. We always want certainty of purpose. Think about this for a minute because pilots, when they fly an airplane, they have to have certainty about the instrumentation on their panels. Think about this for a minute. A doctor, when he is trying to operate on somebody, he tries to have a certain amount of certainty as to what the outcome is. Truth takes guesswork out of life because your operation is on an absolute standard that it sits outside of you. You shall know the truth and the truth Ooh. shall set you free. <laughs> I said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. First, the truth must exist. Second, you have to know before you can be free. If you don't know it, you can't be free. All right. The truth is God's view on any subject. The truth is God's view on any subject. The truth of the matter is, is that the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy truth of the matter is, is that this day true. of Pentecost has been celebrated for 3,000 years. The truth of the matter is, is that we have come here collectively because we are celebrating this feast that has been directed to be celebrated throughout our generations. One of the things that is powerful about the day of Pentecost is that it gives you a sense of power. Not only did it give them comfort, but it gave them power. Right. Because see, when you got the Holy Ghost, I said, when you got the Holy Ghost, Come on now. I said, when you got the Holy, the Holy Ghost is power. Yeah. And what, one of the things I can say this, and I probably have told this story before, but I can remember a time when, man, I, 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 was, I was driving, and, and actually we were on our way to church, and I got pulled over by the police, and, 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 and the police came up to the car and was being a little belligerent, but I, I had my mother behind me in the back seat. And I, I heard as, as the cops was talking to me, the blood shepherd, the blood shepherd, the blood shepherd. Mom, you need to calm down, Mama. I'm talking to the yeah. blood shovel, the blood shovel. And, and the cop was, you know, going on and on and on. Next thing I know, he said, oh, got to go, got to go, got to go. Got another car, got to go. Here, take the license back. <laughs> Prayer works. Prayer works, y'all. <laughs> Prayer works. Because I got pulled over last week, and my mama wasn't sitting back then. They gave me a ticket. <laughs> But the power of the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. the power of the Holy Ghost is God's truth. I said God's truth. The thing of it is, is that as we understand that this thing that, that is, is, this truth is not based on facts. You can have facts and not have the truth. That's right. I said you can have facts and not have the truth. That's right. We I live in a culture the where the fact of the matter is a man can go out and call himself a woman. But the truth is, you will always be a man. Uh -huh. So you can't rely on the facts as it relates to God. Because God bases everything off the truth. And the truth is that anything God says is the truth. Yeah. The world will try to manipulate it. We find that over and over again, Satan has always tried to inter intertwine, you know, facts to be spiritual, to derail people who are believers. One of the things that we find is that with the truth is God's view on any subject, and if people don't agree with it, then they're a liar. 
Truth is not, uh, not based on the facts. That's why the fear of God is the foundation of wisdom. I say the fear of God is the foundation of wisdom. Uh -huh. There's a system trying to prevent the truth. A system trying to prevent the truth. That's right. I go to verse 14 and it says, I have given them the word and the world had hated them because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, I pray not that they that thou should uh, shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So God, Jesus, specifically is addressing the fact that we live in a world, we live in a culture that contradicts the truth. Uh, as we reflect on it, Satan doesn't mind using God's name, but not using God's truth. Adam and Eve in scripture says that the two shall become uh, one in unity. But that first conversation between man and Satan, he twists the word of God and destroys his home and his children. Satan know if he can break up the truth, he can break up the unity. Satan's objective is to create disunity. Oh, yeah. So as I speak and I That's close right. on today, yeah. I, I, my, my message and, and, and emphasis is on the power of unity. Uh -huh. And the power of unity yeah. is understood as we come under a common purpose, which is that is the truth of God is being the, 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 the focal point of each and everything that we do, especially as ministers, especially as saints of God. You are going to encounter the world around you that is going to try and contradict the word of God. That's why it's so important that you study that you learn. So when the world comes to you and they try to tell you and try to sell you on this culture, the culture of change, the culture of how you say, well, that ain't right. That, that, that ain't right. You yeah. can't decide to be a woman. You can't decide to be a man. You can't just decide to do certain things that are contradiction to the truth and then try to sell it to me because this is the acceptable thing to do. I put that out there today because we are bound by the truth. We are bound by a common purpose. We are bound by the theme and the understanding that God created us for this day and this time. We understand that the world can use unity and do things as they did with the Tower of Babel. And, and that's when God came down and confounded man's speech because they had gotten so good at being able to collaborate that they were trying to get in all the way up to heaven. However, so we are in this day and we are in this time for a purpose. Our common pur purpose is to live upright before God and live the truth that God has spoken over each and every one of our lives. That we are living and we are living testimony. As we reflected on a number of people who said that, you know, I'm a living testimony. That God, I, got, I got tested and I made it through. I said, I got tested and I made it through. God allowed me to be able to get through whatever the situation is and come out on the other side. So I say that in closing on today, power of unity, saints, that we are here to under a unified purpose. We are here under a common goal that we are the children of God, created in this year 2021, to be uh, the, the focal point when the world starts collapsing around us. Because as you look around you and you see that the things that have been prophesied unfolding, one of the things that you see that is uh, rapidly approaching, and that is Armageddon. Armageddon is World War III. World War III is something that has been prophesied, and they said there were certain things that were going to happen in order for it to occur. And as you see, as China gets stronger, as you see, as Russia becomes more frustrated, as you see, as the Middle East becomes more, uh, 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 in, in, you know, unstable. Thank you. you. You see all of these things happening, and it's been prophesied that these are the, the precursors to certain events happening. And one of the things that has been a consistent thing is that prophecy has come true. So it don't make no difference about what somebody says. 
prophecy has consistently come true. They said it is more, uh, it, is, it, it is so unlikely that, that these events have occurred and the consistency with it have occurred, they, they accounted to having a bow dollar, uh, uh, one bow dollar, and having all of Texas covered with bow dollars and being able to find one bow dollar. They said that's how unlikely these prophecies are unfolding and are coming to pass, that these wars, rumors of wars, all the, you think COVID is a surprise to God? God wasn't right. surprised right. by COVID. Right. God wasn't surprised by all of the civil unrest that's occurring. God wasn't surprised by Donald Trump. All of these things, events have occurred with a purpose. And we have to understand as a group that the unity that we have within each other is the only thing that keeps our common purpose alive. That we have to stay unified in our purpose. We have to stay unified in our understanding. We have to become educated you know, educated in the truth. Because the, as it said, the truth will what? Will set you free. That, what that means is that when they start trying to sell you this, because the one thing that made Trump so successful is he's a, he, he, he's, he's a, he's a great pitch man. He, he, he's a, he's a, that, that's all Hitler was. He was, a, he was a great pitch man. So we have to understand that it's the, 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 the bombardment of these ideas, the bombardment of these conspiracies, the bombardment of all of this information, if we don't have the truth, I said, if you don't have the truth that, 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 that God is, I said that the Holy Ghost is, that the Holy Ghost is real, that the, the blood of Jesus, I said that the blood of Jesus shall prevail. The blood of Jesus shall prevail. The blood of Jesus shall prevail over cancer. The blood of Jesus shall prevail over COVID. The blood of Jesus shall prevail over economic downturn. The blood of Jesus shall prevail over violence. The blood of Jesus always shall prevail. So in unity, I said in unity we come together under the common purpose of understanding that the truth will and has set us free. Pray for me. Come on, bless the Lord. How many know the truth has set us free? It'll make you, it'll set you. Thank God for you, Jeff. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Thank God for the word. Come on, thank God for the word. Hallelujah. That's why we're here to receive the word of God into our lives as we get ready to prepare ourselves to leave. We thank God for the truth. Thank God for knowing the truth. Thank God for them giving it to us down through the years. And you know what? I was one of those people in Bible class that if they said something and it didn't line up with the Bible, I said, let me go find it. 